the PNM had to bring under its political control as many leaders of the trade unions as was possible. With state power in its hands, it distributed the favors and perks of trade union office in the form of senatorships, scholarships, directorships of the boards of the new state enterprises and diplomatic postings. There seemed to be no end to the number of trade union leaders who stepped forward to receive gifts. Let me read over that last sentence. There seemed to be no end to the number of trade union leaders who stepped forward to receive these gifts. End of quote. This quote is from the book Dare to Struggle, A History of the CWU by Teddy Belgrave. Comrades, all protocols observed. Thank you, Chairman, for your welcome, kind remarks. Tonight, I am not going to talk about unity so much. I am going to bring a message of fire. Tonight, I don't want to waste my time talking about unity. Unity seems futile in Trinidad and Tobago. Tonight, I will be looking at the Butlerite tradition, and I will also be looking at what is a progressive trade union. Ever since the era of Tubal Uriah Buzz Butler, this era of trade unionism had its union, its solidarity, its unity, but there were also divisions. Captain Arthur Cipriani, he had the Trinidad Working Men's Association. Adrian Colerienzi had the Trinidad Citizens League. Butler had his own party, the British Empire Workers and Citizens Home Rule Party. Butler also had his union. In fact, some of you all might know that Butler was expelled in 1939 from the OWTU for initiating unauthorized strike action. Yes, charismatic and stubborn Butler was someone who put the loyalty of the working class often before union matters. How is this relevant to Trinidad and Tobago how is this relevant to the CWU? Firstly, the CWU refused to be part of the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Joint Trade Union Movement, the PNM, and the ILP. But the CWU had a very valid reason. About six years ago, the PNM government sought to have this union decertified. Now, I have a copy of the MOU. Some of you all might have seen it also. And it was signed in August 2015. And listen to the first line. From the inception of the PNM in January 1956, we pledged ourselves to the encouragement of an effective democratic trade union movement and the adoption of a comprehensive modern labor code to favor proper employment practices and to abolish discrimination in employment. End of quote. Really? Really? I want to highlight something in this book that Teddy Belgrave wrote. Eh? He referred to the telephone company as party group number 13. That was what it was considered. And Teddy wrote, let me quote, it was government and party policy to have the telephone company act as an important source of employment for the relatives of the party faithful, the people of the ghettos of Port of Spain, and for the young and bright secondary school graduates who had achieved insufficient certification. End of quote. I also want to go back in to history and tell you all a bit about the Industrial Stabilization Act passed by Eric Williams in 1965. It was an attempt to take away the right of unions to strike. Williams in his book Inward Hunger wrote that this ISA was supposed to keep the two major unions 
oil and sugar divided. And this oppressive legislation in 1965 actually made some form of temporary unity amongst the unions. Some of you all might know about that black power era in which the government, the PNM government, terrorized trade unionists, the jail persons, union leaders like George Weeks. They entered the OWTU library looking for seditious material, communist and Marxist literature. That was the black power era when unions were terrorized. This year, 2015, is the 40th anniversary of Bloody Tuesday, which occurred on the 18th of March, 1975 in San Fernando. Leaders and marchers were jailed. Trade unionists were beaten. I don't have to tell you who the Prime Minister was. We had states of emergency. Two states of emergency during 1970 and 1971. Union leaders were terrorized and jailed. But this was not unique. Tubal Uriah Butler was hounded down and jailed during the colonial era. And this is one aspect of the Butlerite tradition I want to remind you all about. Butler and the Butlerites were willing to sacrifice their lives. They were willing to be jailed for the working class. They were willing to die in the quest for justice. I don't want you all to forget, under the last PNM government, Comrade David Abdullah was arrested. I know Comrade Remy and other union leaders are not afraid of making a jail. Now, I, I, know, I know Trinidad Jail is comfortable. They have nice cell phones and they, eh? they have a lot of luxuries in there. But the question I want to ask you tonight, are you ready to be arrested for the cause of the working class? To battle or to die, that's this, the line in hold your fort. Would you be ready to die for the labor movement in Trinidad and Tobago? Would you be willing to sacrifice your life and your reputation? I know that the CWU deeply desires genuine labor unity. Comrade Remy mentioned cosmetic unity. I want to commend the CWU for not compromising your independence as a progressive working class institution. And this is important when you consider the early history of the CWU. In early history, the PNM had among its members a number of trade union leaders. And this independence and genuine unity is especially important in our political climate. Last month, an offer of $15 million was made to the labor movement. Now this $15 million seems very small, you know. When you consider the millions wasted during election time for advertising and buying jerseys, I want you to think about all that money that was wasted and that, that money could have been used to buy medical equipment. That money could have been used to build a primary school or a secondary school, wasted for election. It seems unfortunate that NATO decided to accept their allocation of $5 million from the government. NATO also asked the government for land to establish a cooperative similar to Price Mart. I want to warn the government, this government and future governments. I want to warn the opposition. I want to warn other political parties that the trade union movement in Trinidad and Tobago is not for sale. No amount of money, no amount of land should divide this trade union movement. The Butlerites work too hard to build this movement. This is a great legacy of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. 
Comrade Remy mentioned about the politicians smiling. Politicians are very happy, you know. The politicians are very, very happy. Our labor movement must never be in the back pocket of our politicians or the front pocket. Our leaders could be in their back pockets, but the labor movement must never be there. I am sure labor heroes such as Elma Francois, Butler, CLR James, and George Padmore must be turning in their graves. Lyle Townsend must be wondering what is happening to this great trade union movement. Many citizens in Trinidad and Tobago today often find the union irrelevant. There's a wrong perception of the unions that all they could do is shut down the country. Unions are still viewed as performing the limited role of only obtaining higher wages and better conditions for their workers and their members. A few months ago, I was doing interviews for some of my research, and I interviewed an old gentleman, 84 years old, 84 years, and he said something to me that, that really hit home. You know what he told me? He said, young man, life in Trinidad and Tobago was better during the colonial days. And I couldn't believe that. Here I am doing my research and writing about the great trade union movement that challenged imperialism and destroyed colonialism. And here is this gentleman. And he said that many people think so today, you know, the older generation. He said a lot of them feel life was better under the colonial era. And I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that. How? How could we compare the colonial era to this long struggle that the Butlerites undertook to obtain independence in 1962? Today, trade unions must direct their struggle against those economic parasites that drain our economy and exploit the working class. Progressive trade unions, Butlerites, must become the voice for the voiceless, the voice for the weak, the voice for the children. More than 350 citizens have been murdered for this year. And every few years, we often cross the 300 mark, 300 and this, 400 and this murdered. And I ask you all, where is the voice of labor? demanding justice. Whenever one of our citizens are killed and murdered, labor must come out and condemn it. Innocent blood cries out for justice and labor remains silent. Labor is silent. Babies are being killed in daycare centers. Young children are being physically abused by immature adults. And labor is silent. Where is the voice of my precious labor? After the recent elections in September, on the social media, there were words such as coolie and nigger. And I was surprised. I see how in 2015, people could be using these derogatory words, coolie and nigger. Is this what democracy means? But well, then we shouldn't have elections. We shouldn't have local and government elections. If this creates this racial hatred. And I, and I was observing and I was asking myself, I wonder which trade union would come out and condemn this. The CWU, Phaeton and NATO cannot boast of being progressive radical or militant or part of the butlerite tradition if you remain quiet amongst these social problems. In the supplement of the Business Express Newsday, Business Express newspaper, 19th of August 2015, the headline was, IMF 
time for belt tightening in Trinidad and Tobago. Listen to that. IMF is giving us advice. Eh? Time for belt tightening in Trinidad and Tobago. But last Sunday, the news day, the headline was Rowley buys paintings. He's buying paintings from Casabon. Casabon, great artist, Trinidadian, is buying it from an auction in England. Now I want to be very careful eh, who, what I say because I don't want any pre action protocol letters coming to me or the CWU. But I want you to ask yourself, I want you to ask yourself something. Were you silent in the past? And maybe that is why you are silent now. We use taxpayers' money for culture. We use taxpayers' money, the politicians, to do whatever they want. And we remain quiet. We might call on a radio station. We might write a letter to the newspaper. But this is your money. This is taxpayers' money. And why I find it so strange is that our healthcare still needs help. We have all these murders and still, still we are wasting money. The politicians, I, I, I wish the politicians would use their personal bank accounts when they're doing information, when they're doing these purchases. And the last government, millions and millions on travel abroad. Millions and millions. The workers, the workers in our trade unions have lost faith. Many are not prepared to fight in the trenches. Many cannot endure delays in collective bargaining. There's a disenchantment amongst the workers. There's a new generation of union members who are more educated but less tolerant of myopic leadership. Some labor leaders make empty threats. They seek cheap publicity when workers are frustrated. Workers are realizing broken promises and hypocrisy now seem to be a norm. Any trade unionist who makes deals with corrupt governments, they have betrayed the working class. I am urging leaders to respect your union membership. It's very controversial if labor should become involved in politics. The involvement in politics is one way to gain respect and to gain a voice to prevent you all from becoming marginalized. During the 1930s, Cipriani was there. There were men like Timothy Rudal and F.E.M. Hussein. Butler had his political party. And let me tell you all something about Butler in 1950. Eh? In the 1950 elections, Butler actually won the most seats. But Governor Rance felt Butler and his Butlerites were too radical to form the government. Butler should have been our first Premier and first Prime Minister. I want you all to think about that. So the next time you're wondering about who should be the father of the nation, I want you to remember who won the elections in 1950. There were political parties in the, in the past with a labor base. There was the Trinidad Labor Party, the Trinidad Tobago Trades Union Council and Socialist Party of Trinidad Tobago. We had the Workers and Farmers Party with CLR James. We had the ULF in the 1970s. Recently, we had the MSJ. And then uh, almost two weeks ago, the National Solidarity Assembly was launched at the Rienzi Complex. You had the head of the PSA getting involved in elections in Tobago. If labor has to become involved in politics, you all need genuine labor unity first. I don't want to use the words coalition or partnership or alliance. Labor has to form something like a soup or a pillar or something and come together. But it must be genuine. And the labor movement must become disciplined first. There's a lot, of, a lot of people who are undisciplined and want to do what they want, you know. There needs to be a disciplined, united labor movement. And I want to tell you about the, the reason why I mentioned a disciplined labor movement. 
It is a blot on our history. It's an embarrassment to see what happened at Labor Day this year. At Labor Day this year, the acting president of NATO and the head of PSA sought to speak on the platform and he had to be forcibly removed by the police. And I want to ask you, is this part of the bottle right tradition? I, I want genuine labor unity. That sacred march that unionists made on June the 19th is very important, you know. That rally on June the 19th, that May Day rally, it's an important time to assess your shortcomings, your achievements, and your future strategies. The Labor Day and May Day rallies is another opportunity for the trade union movement to reflect on their level of unity and the Butlerite tradition. I want you to consider something. England, our mother country, had labor governments that were successful. Why can't we have a labor government in Trinidad and Tobago? Other places in the Caribbean had labor governments. It is time for the labor movement to become serious, disciplined, and more united. Trade unions often appear irrelevant to contract workers. And this is normal because trade unions often limit their membership to full-time workers. Contract employment allows employers to control the level of productivity but also exploit workers. It allows the employer to terminate a contract and the worker often to be unable to challenge the decision. Trade union leaders have realized contract employment is anti-worker. But there are occasional reports that women have to provide sexual favors to obtain contract work or to renew contracts. The voice of labor condemned this action. There are instances when illegal immigrants are employed in contract employment, and this often denies a legal citizens the right to work. Where is the voice of labor? These negative aspects of contract labor prove that the labor movement should be united. Maybe there is need to create a special trade union or a special branch or section to represent contract workers. If a CPEP worker is damaged by a vehicle, who would pay his medical bills? <coughs> Today in the Caribbean, our politicians have wasted our wealth. They are the pirates of the Caribbean. They are the real pirates of the Caribbean. And I want you all at the CWU and the rest of the trade union movement to monitor closely other Caribbean governments. The future of this trade union movement appears bleak in 2015. In 2015, I see dark clouds. I see no silver lining. I see dark clouds. I thanks. If you forget everything I've said tonight, if you forget everything Comrade Remy and the Chairman have said tonight, I want you to remember one sentence. Any government in Trinidad Tobago and the Caribbean, they would enjoy a weak and divided labor movement. If you forget everything, remember that a weak and divided movement would make any government very happy and very proud. The Butlerite tradition has to be preserved. It has to be returned. It cannot be diluted. It cannot be watered down. It cannot be devalued. The Butlerites of 2015 must re-educate the rank and file. Tell them about the vision of the 1930s and 1940s. In 1961, Dr. Eric Williams made a speech at the University of Woodford Square. It was entitled, 
Massa Dei Don. You know who was Massa during slavery days? He was a white planter. Massa was a white planter who ensured that the slave remained there and never rose. <coughs> Today I want to ask you in 2015, who is Massa? Massa Day has returned, you know. William said it done in, he said this at the University of Woodford Square. I am telling you tonight, Massa Day has returned and Massa has come back. You know who Massa is? Massa is Cable and Wireless. Massa is anyone who oppresses contract workers. Massa is anyone if you oppress the poor and unemployed. Massa would be those persons who allow babies to die in our hospitals and daycare centers. You know who Massa is? Massa is those persons who put those videos on YouTube circulating. Massa, listen to this. Massa is anyone and any institution who divides the labor movement. That is Massa. You know, for iron and steel to become strong, it must, be, it must pass through fire. And I feel our trade union movement needs some fire, you know. You know there was a documentary, Fire in Babylon, talking about cricket. I want to also condemn the CWU here. Yeah? They sent a nice press release talking about the, the coaching problems and Simmons. I also want to tell the CWU that you also have to examine T20 cricket for some of our problems in West Indian cricket. Eh? This T20, everybody want quick runs. We want to see Gale and Pollard make those sixes. We want to see them throw the ball beyond the boundary. I want to tell you all, the CWU, it will take more than press releases to create genuine labor unity. It will take more than press releases to preserve that butlerite tradition. It will take more than press releases to destroy Massa. I want you all in the CWU and the Progressive Trade Union, I want you all to light a fire in those 41 constituencies. I don't want you to wait any longer, you know. I want you to start a fire and I want you to keep it burning. I want you to start this fire I want you to start a fire for the present captain and his crew, for the former captain and her crew. I want you to start a fire for those masters and tell them a big fire coming to burn them in 2020. Thank you.